Hey guys, how's it going? This is something uh, a little different than my normal uh, repairs. Uh, this is the repair of an aluminum hoop. Hoop. <laughs> Either way, found a crack right in that area right there. You know, you almost see daylight right through there. But anyway, uh, I've repaired one of these before. In a long time. I don't do much aluminum, and you guys know that because you don't see much aluminum. And so I'll probably do it wrong. And there are probably better ways for me to do it. And I get it. Because, uh, you know, there are nice ways to do it all nice and clean and things. And I just don't have all that stuff. Because I don't do this stuff. So I will do it to the best of my ability. And it'll come out fine. Because it's going to work. So stick around. And you'll see the repair of this aluminum hoop. And... Uh, should be pretty simple. It doesn't take too terribly long, so it'll be a very short video. All right. I'm gonna spray some of this stuff on there. It's a penetrant, dye penetrant. Works pretty good. You now I could have used a cleaner, but I don't have any more. So this is what we're using. <laughs> Gotta let that sit for a bit. All right. Okay, we'll let it sit for a while and wipe off the excess. And spray this developer. I'm going to develop her. Hopefully it doesn't get all clogged on me. I get a little clogged sometimes. Like that. All right. Oh, good. It's enough for me to see at least. Okay, well, good enough. You're able to see how far it goes. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I repair these things, or any crack for that matter, is I actually like to go past the end of the crack, maybe about, in, in, in the case of like steel on heavy equipment, anything thicker than one inch or so, you can't always drill a hole at the end of the weld, at the end of the crack, sorry. And so what ends up happening is that you'll end up gouging pretty deep and the, the, the crack will disappear because you run past the end of the crack. But sometimes it's very difficult of telling where the end of the crack is. Like in this situation here, you can see the end of the crack right there. So in my case, what I like to do is go past the end of the crack as I'm gouging, still just as deep uh, as far as the gouging goes. So that as, as I weld in there, it will blend in together with apparent metal that is not cracked. Almost similar when you're tying a tack, a, tying into a tack on either a pipe or a plate, you blend the edges, you feather them out, you thin them out towards the ends. And as you crawl, uh, get closer to the apparent metal, then it'll just blend in smoothly and naturally. So that's my theory on, on heavy equipment also. And anytime we're doing something like this, it'll blend in there deep if you have it hot enough, set hot enough, and it'll it'll be fine. So you don't necessarily always have to drill a hole at the end of the crack to say, oh, I'm gonna drill a hole right there. No, you can just go past it and continue on. All right, next step. I like to use these here. These don't get clogged up as easy, but boy, oh boy, are they aggressive. They'll start eating that aluminum like, like crazy. So you gotta be kind of careful. And uh, they also sell them in the, the, in the ball style. It's the only one I got. So this is the only one we're going to use. So uh, cut out a nice little V groove in there. Now like I mentioned, go past this, this uh, crack a little bit. I will fill this end up. And then I will expose the crack on the opposite side until I get deep enough to where it, I can tell that the crack has disappeared into the parent metal that I've already added on this end. And then fill it up, and then that'd be it. All right.
Okay, so I cleaned it up a bit. <clears throat> it's looking good. I got a little too deep on this end here. My bad, I guess. But either way, you can still feel it. You can step across it, you can feel it. So, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this end here and work my way to the open end. And, you know, there's mixed feelings on how to think of this in the sense that Maybe if you tie the end, the loose end up, then maybe you can um, keep it from spreading. Or you can work your way from this way that way, and as it heats up, it won't want to crack because it's already, it's already welded from the in inner part out. I really don't know. Uh, I've done it both ways, and I haven't had any complaints yet, so I'm just going to try it from here that way, and especially since I cut out too much there. And I could just bridge that gap as I'm getting closer. So hopefully you guys can see that. You guys are really close to the camera, like about three inches away or so. So it's uh, gonna be a little bit of a challenge. I'm gonna try and see if you can see what I'm doing. And just know, I am not by any means any professional on welding aluminum. So I know I may have a lot of comments on everything I was doing wrong, which is totally cool. I mean, that's how you learn, right? So here we go. Oh, dirty gloves too. Yeah, take that. That was a little horrible. There was still some junk in there I wasn't able to clean out. Look at all that black stuff. Yucca. I guess it was a clear coating on there. Uh, I'm going to put some more on there. Did I say more on? I'm going to put more on there. And then see what the other side looks like. That was pretty bad. It was really nasty. Uh, a lot of stuff was uh, coming out. And I'm sure you could hear it in the weld. Probably couldn't see it. So let me move this over here. See if that makes any difference to you. But take two.
Yeah, it's pretty nasty, but as a uh, friend of mine says, no bubbles, no trouble, so hopefully it doesn't leak. Man, that's horrible. Lee. Could be the difference in aluminums. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, no obvious pinholes. So we'll keep moving. pretty nasty but it'll work right all right let me move uh positions okay so <laughs> got some grape nuts come through this side uh which is all right i guess because that was the side that was uh i cut too deep and it's tore open so i'll clean that up a little bit and you can see some penetration in here to where the the well was starting to come through that crack or the center of that crack so I will try and cut into that area with the uh, die grinder and see if I can find the end of the crack here. That's got a lot of cleanup to do, but no problem. I'll get it fixed and um, we'll see. All right. Okay, so I turned up the hertz a little bit. Hopefully that'll keep, help me at least, because uh, I was struggling. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I don't know enough about aluminum to know any better. So uh, the machines I used to use were the old Miller um, Dialark HFs, two lever, <laughs> 60 hertz. Man, that was a good machine at the time, but this was back in the 90s. And so, uh, I don't know if I mentioned already that I have a Dynasty 350, and that thing is smarter than I am, because <laughs> I just don't know how to use it. And uh, uh, I don't get enough jobs uh, for aluminum. This this job here is for free, it's for a friend. So it's good learning for me and, um, and a repair for him. So, uh, here we go. Lucky guys and all that. I'm trying not to do it over here. It looks like it'll work. Okay, so I got finished up. Oops, too much light on there. I guess you can't tell. 
Okay, so, you know, that is definitely not the prettiest, uh, but it will definitely do. So for now, I'm gonna let that cool off, then I'm gonna finish it up uh, by, by uh, cleaning all that extra excess weld off. And I thought I saw a little bit of an extra crack over here towards this backside. So I'm gonna look into that tomorrow. So it's already late in the afternoon. And so anyway, uh, for what it is, uh, it is what it is. Did it work? Yes. Is it uh, pretty? No. Did I do it properly? Oh yeah, no way. Uh, what is, what's the word? Pragmatic, right? Not necessarily theoretically proper, but it got the job done. So we shall see what it looks like in a little bit. Here we go. All right, so this came out uh, okay, I guess. Uh, as I say, not the best, not the worst, but uh, this aluminum uh, hoop will work. Just need to clean it up best I can, get the excess off there so it doesn't throw off any of the weight, uh, the balance, that's it, to say. But who knows? I mean, this hoop could be bent to begin with. Uh, so let me clean it up and then we'll look at it again. Okay, so looks like that's gonna do it. I do have a, a couple little pinholes here that I don't like, but they look like surface pinholes. But what I'll do is I'll end up uh, putting some dye penetrant on there and see if it comes out through the bottom side. So, heck, I'll do it right now. And, uh, that way we can kind of make sure, <coughs> see, make sure that those pinholes aren't an issue. Uh, I don't like leaving them, but uh, uh, we'll see. So let me fill that up and I'll get back with you guys after a bit. Okay, so it looks like, uh, like those are just surface pinholes. I looked around the bottom, nothing's coming through. And although I'd like to uh, go back and fill them in. Uh, real work is coming, as in pain work. <laughs> so this was for a friend. So I explained to him that, that those aren't going to go anywhere, not going to leak. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, at least it gives an idea of how to weld these aluminum hoops uh, so that uh, you can get one back on the road if necessary. And I'm sure there are better ways of doing it. Uh, not I'm sure there are better ways of doing it. I am positive there are better ways of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't prepared for welding on aluminum. So, uh, you know, maybe if you learn something good, well, good. If you learn something bad, well, don't do what I did. So, again, this is a how I did it, not how to do it. So, I guess I will catch you guys on the next one.